Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mazzoro, and today what I want to do is I want to continue our discussions about where the oceans are and how they're changing by talking about how we know they're changing. Specifically, you know, not just taking my word for that the, some oceans are getting bigger and smaller and new oceans are being created, but how do we know that's happening? And more to the point, if some oceans are being created and new oceans are being created, then where's the old ocean going? I mean, the world isn't getting any bigger, so if I'm going to account for the fact that something is being created, I have to say where the old stuff is going. And last, I'm going to teach you guys how to look at a map and sh determine all this. Not go thousands of miles underneath the ocean and not study geophysicists, but just simply look at a map and say, oh, okay, here's what's happening in the ocean right there. So, first, how do we know that new oceans are being created, old oceans are going away? Well, that theory that the continents broke apart, Pangaea moved, the oceans changed, that's called continental drift, or plate tectonics, and it was first proposed by this guy, Alfred Wegener. He was a German geophysicist in the late 1800s. And Wagner was not the first one to propose this theory, but he was the first one really to kind of put it all together, synthesize it, and formally bring it to the forefront of science. And he had two basic pieces of evidence to support that all the continents were moving and some oceans were being getting bigger and smaller, et cetera, et cetera. His first piece of evidence was that if you look at the east coast of America and the west coast of Europe, as well as the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa, fossils and actually mountain ranges seem to run off of one continent and onto another. Now, fossils, you can explain that by saying, well, maybe the earth was one way and two organisms evolved exactly the same way in exactly the same, uh, at exactly the same time in two completely different areas of the earth. Or you can explain it by saying maybe those areas were together and that they once split apart. So that's the first piece of evidence Wagner had. He said that, well, maybe the, they were there and split apart. So that makes a little bit more sense. Then, Wagner noticed that when he put the continents together, that their coastlines seemed to start to fit together like puzzle pieces. When you start lining up those fossils and those mountain ranges that run off of one continent and onto another, their coastlines seemed to fit. Wagner decided that this was enough evidence to support that the Earth didn't always look like the way it does today. That, in fact, the Earth has changed over time and is still changing. The problem was, Wegner didn't have any mechanism to explain what force could be big enough on Earth to move a continent, to plow a continent through, Earth, through rock. There was no force known, and Wegner was a geophysicist. He, he knew about forces. He had to account for, if you're going to say that the continents are moving, what force is moving that continent. And as a result, Wegner's theory of plate tectonics didn't get any credit. And he died alone, basically the equivalent of, of a scientific said hobo clown. Alfred Wegener, because he didn't have a mechanism, died a said hobo clown. And that's where it sat, basically up until World War II. In World War II, Henry Hess, a geologist from Princeton, mapped out the bottom of the ocean, specifically the Atlantic Ocean, and found this gigantic gigantic spreading center on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean that no one had ever seen there before. When they started to study this spreading center, they started to realize that the rock in the spreading center was a lot newer, closer to the spreading center than as you got farther away. The red or orange areas are the newer rock, and then those blue and cooler areas are the old rock. And Henry Hess had heard of Alfred Wegener and plate tectonics and realized that this was the mechanism that Alfred Wegener was missing. Henry Hess and his discovery of this idea that the seafloor is spreading from these centers is known as seafloor spreading, and that provided the main mechanism to Alfred Wegener's theory of plate tectonics. If you look, there's more than just one spreading center, more than just the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There's spreading centers on all the areas of all, all the oceans of Earth. And there's even this one, uh, the Central Indian Ridge, which is actually what the spreading center that's forming the Red Ocean, that's turning the Red Sea into the Red Ocean. However, we in this class are really only going to focus on this one, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. 
because it's the largest, and because all ridges are basically the same, they're just deep spreading centers on the bottom where new seafloor is being created. So, all right, if new seafloor is being created in these ridges, in these spreading centers, then where's the old seafloor growing? Well, before I can explain that, I have to first tell you about the difference between land rock and, and ocean rock. I have to tell you the difference between a oceanic tectonic plate and a land tectonic plate. Oceanic tectonic plates, basically rock underneath the oceans, that's a rock most commonly known as basalt. This is a dark, dense rock full of iron. In fact, they use that iron to figure out how old that rock is, and they use that iron necessarily to figure out that the rock nearest to the spreading centers is younger than the rocks further away. That basalt is way more dense than granite, land rock. And it's that density that's a key, because basalt, or ocean rock, is more dense than land rock. When basalt is created in an ocean ridge, and old basalt is pushed out of the way, when that old basalt butts up against land or granite, it will sink. That sinking is called subduction one plate sinking under another, and it happens all over the earth because there are spreading centers all over the earth. That sinking forms the deepest, darkest parts of our ocean, what are known as oceanic trenches. These areas are still today and will ever always be the deepest parts of the ocean, and they're formed when basalt, or a tectonic plate, sinks under another tectonic plate. The deepest part of the Pacific Ocean, which, if you remember from the last lesson, is the deepest ocean, is known as the Marianas Trench. And just to give you an idea of how deep that ocean, that area of, that, of the Pacific Ocean is, if you go to the bottom of the Marianas Trench and you took Mount Everest and sat it at the bottom and hiked all the way to the top of Mount Everest, there would still be about a mile, mile and a half of water above your head at the peak of Mount Everest. In other words, the ocean is a lot deep than the earth is tall. The deep trenches are, are, are unfathomably deep. It would take days and weeks if you took a rock and chucked it off a boat for it actually to sink to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. So, new ocean floor is being created at a ridge, pushing old ocean floor out of the way. When that old ocean floor meets anything, because it's dense basalt, it's going to begin to sink under and form a trench. Now, we have to start talking about the last thing that I wanted to discuss, which is, okay, all of this geology is fun, but how do we look at a map and tell this is going to happen? I mean, I don't want to have to look at, like, schematics and a bunch of scientific numbers. I just want to really down and dirty be able to look at a map and, and be able to determine what's happening geologically. And it is actually possible. When basalt meets continental rock, when basalt meets granite, it's going to sink under. And that sinking forms a trench. Subduction will always form a trench. However, that basalt plate is going to begin to melt. And the melting plate is going to start melting through the, melting through the continental granite plate. And that forms volcanoes and mountains eventually. So if you ever see mountains that are right near a trench, you know that the two tectonic plates that are meeting must be basalt and granite. Trench and mountains, basalt and granite. When an ocean plate meets another ocean plate, the same basic thing happens. You, you still get one plate sinking under because one plate's always going to be more dense than the other. And that always forms a trench. But now, when the plate begins to melt and melt through the plate that it's sinking under, you don't have any land to form mountains on. Instead, you form islands. Volcanic islands are just regular islands. So, when you have a basalt plate or an ocean plate meeting a basalt plate, you still have a trench, but you get islands, not mountains. So now, next time you look at a map, Anywhere you see islands, look right off the coast and see if you can see a trench. Like, for instance, Japan. Right off the coast of Japan, Japan's an island, there's a trench called the Japanese Trench. You know that since Japan's an island, and there's a trench right off the coast, that Japan must have resulted from two basalt plates meeting. There's a mountain range that goes through right, right through Mexico called the Cordella Nova Volcanica, or the Mid-American Volcanic Belt. And 
that mid-American volcanic belt is associated with the mid-Atlantic trench. So you get a trench and you get mountains. So what's meeting there? Well, that's a granite plate because it's mountains meeting a basalt plate. Trench and mountains, basalt and granite. Trench and islands, basalt, basalt. So how do we know the oceans are changing? Again, it was first proposed by Alfred Wegener, but we finally discovered the mechanism when Henry Hess found ocean ridges, discovered the first ocean ridge, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, those spreading centers that is literally forcing the ocean apart. But if new ocean floor is being created in those spreading centers, where's the old ocean floor going? Well, because basalt is more dense, it's going to sink under. That subduction forms a trench, and that plate eventually melts and becomes either islands or mountains, depending on what the basalt is meeting. If the basalt is meeting granite, it's going to be a trench in mountains. If the basalt is meeting basalt, it's a trench in islands. So that's how you can look at a map and determine what's happening inside the ocean, what tectonic activity is actually happening inside the ocean. So that's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time when we talk about ocean provinces.